there are rules to keep in mind relating to every part of speech. Let's start with words we use to describe people, places, things, and ideas. Nouns and pronouns. Nouns are usually described, as you probably remember, as referring to people, places, things, or ideas. So, the word chair, as a part of speech, is a noun. It's a thing. Freedom, as a word, is a noun. It's an idea. Steve is a noun refers to a person. So, person, place, thing, or idea. And you've noticed from the examples that a noun can be a general or common noun. In other words, it doesn't start with a capital letter. Or a proper noun, a noun that starts with a capital letter and refers to some specific person named Steve. So that's probably the part of speech that came to mind first. Pronouns are noun substitutes. They're little words that take the place of a noun in a sentence. So the pronoun or noun substitute for the noun chair would be it. And the same for freedom. Steve would be he. You have to make sure that you replace the noun with the, with the right pronoun so that the reader will understand which uh, noun you're referring to with that pronoun. It might be helpful to introduce a vocabulary term here, um, antecedent, and I'll write it up here. An antecedent is the noun whose place the pronoun takes. So the antecedent is the noun, and it's replaced by the pronoun. Now, we I put a sentence up here and I'm going to read it to you, and I think you'll be able to pick out the problem uh, in the sentence. It's called technically an unclear pronoun antecedent. Doesn't really matter if you know that technical term because you're going to be confused when you hear the sentence. And as we've said, that's, that's the big deal. That's the most important thing. The boy bought a book and a calculator, but it wasn't the right one. Now, because you're not sure, uh, well, first of all, here's your here are your nouns, book and calculator. Boy is also a noun, but it's not involved in this situation. So they are the antecedent, and the pronoun is the possible antecedent for the pronoun it. It is replacing either the book or the calculator, and the problem with the sentence is you don't know which one I'm talking about. You don't know if he bought the wrong book or the wrong calculator. I think in this case, you may not be able to use a pronoun substitute. You may have to say the boy bought a book and a calculator, but the calculator wasn't the right one. And I think that the writer here may, may have meant that and may have thought, gosh, it is right next to calculator. How can the reader possibly be confused? But we are because there's another noun right there that he could be referring to. He or him, she or her, who or whom. A lot of people have trouble deciding which pronouns to use. To help keep this straight, remember that the pronoun form depends upon the noun it replaces and what role that noun plays in the sentence. Well, being a first grade teacher, I see the children, they use very inventive spelling and grammar. A lot of them speak the, right the way they speak. And right now, uh, the most that I see is me and my friend, that's the most predominant instead of my friend and I. And my children are teenagers and I'm still correcting them and that's a real pet peeve that I have. People say between you and I and that is wrong. You should say between you and me. And the reason people get it wrong is because um, we have been corrected so often as children to say you and I will go to the store. Uh, he and I came home late. Um, and that's correct because I in those cases is a subject. So you use I. But when you say this was a secret between you and me, me is an object, between is a preposition. So it's the same as saying give it to me, take it from me, between you and me. Between 
to, from, they're all prepositions.